over 10,000 people per day, over 400 people per hour, which means that they were killing seven people per minute. Of course, the run. The Rwandan Patriotic Front, under the leadership of Major General Paul Kagame, stopped the genocide. And after this, then what? Some of the theories came up. One, because France had come to help, so they said, but they had divided the country into two parts, which one part was held by the RPF, and the other part was held by the people who had committed the genocide. So the theory that came out of the East African community by then, they said it would be possible or even in some European countries, they said, since these people had killed many of their own people, it would be very difficult for them to ever live together again. Why don't we divide the country into two, so that the East will be Tutsiland and the West will be Hutuland? Another theory came, and they said, well, since there are many Rwandans who had fled from 1959, 1963, and all the other years that followed when they were killing Tutsis, and they had lived in Tanzania, they lived in Uganda. They said, why don't we shift them to Tanzania? They become citizens of Tanzania instead of going back to Rwanda. And we leave Rwanda to be Hutu land, but all the Tutsis go to Tanzania. The other suggestion was, since Burundi and Rwanda have um, Hutus and Tutsis and Tuas, but also we have them in Eastern Congo, why don't we make sure that Rwanda becomes Tutsi land, we get all the Tutsis from Burundi, we bring them to Rwanda, and then all the Hutus go to Burundi and then we divide them because these people are not going to live together. Thank God that never happened. Otherwise we'll be having another Gaza and Israel conflict going on because we'd be brothers fighting. And at that point in time, the government had shifted and they took a huge group of people going to the other side of the border in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Of course, the West at that point in time didn't consider the people in Rwanda to have any problems. Instead, they went and started supporting many of those that had been taken by this genocidal regime, but also started arming them in hope that they'll come back to Rwanda at some point in time. But this did not deter, because one of the most important, crucial thing at that point in time was how to make sure that Rwanda is secure for Rwandans themselves to be able to live in peace. <coughs> so of course that happened, but also the other thing, the identity that had led us to what has happened. This was almost 61 years before 1933. How are we going to live together if these people still have these identities? So one of the things that they did immediately was to get rid of the ID cards and the, a national identity was built where everyone now would be Rwandan, young or old if you went before, but now we create a national identity where we don't have this divisionism. Instead, we have meritocracy. If you deserve something, then you'll get it instead of having quota systems within our own system. But also remember, with what was going on at that point in time, there was need to sit and strategize and find out how can people live together and set a vision of where they're going to go. So that's where we, we start seeing what we call Uruguay village discussions that took two years discussing every weekend. They would meet for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and people would sit every day to discuss who are we as a people, where do we come from, what was binding us together before this. We had lived since 1100, um, and then all the way to 1994, but we have deeper history. Why should we focus on the shorter history? Can we learn of who we are as a people in the greater world? And from that, that's where we start seeing solutions, and from Rubiro discussions, people are saying, all right, there's things like a charter where people used to sit down and resolve issues in their own communities. Now we have over a million cases of genocide. Are we going to still go with impunity? Like they say, no. Everyone needs to go through the system so that we end impunity. And then we went back to things like Itorio, which was our education system. Can we go back and learn who we are as a people through Itorio? And that was one of those. But also, a country without a vision perishes. Can we set a vision of where we want to go and we work towards that? Then Vision 2020 comes as part of that. And of course, with justice came lots of other issues. How do we know what happened? So, 
The justice system was divided into parts. Since we don't have judges, some of them have killed people, others have been killed, the system is all crumbled. Why don't we get the integral men and women within our community? And then we'll go look for information from each and every hill, finding out who lived there, where did they go, what happened to them, collect information. But also, as we pass on this judgment, are we going to be a punitive system or are we going to be a restorative system? As a matter of fact, almost 68% of all people committed genocide against the Tutsi are out of prison because many of them have served their sentence. And it needed people to understand that there will be a time when these people will, need, will live together. So we need restorative justice instead of punitive justice so that when they come back, they can be worthy citizens who go back in the community and live together. And of course, difficult living conditions lead people to want to in-group and find solutions. And it's easy for leaders to scapegoat and point it to the other people. And through that, people can be able to call the other, they call them the enemy, and they create them versus us. So how do we make sure that we elevate our own people from poverty? How do we make sure that we have our people have access to education? How do we make sure that we have our people have access to healthcare? And as they did that, also a new generation came up, and I'm among those who came up. And I started thinking, how would I be a bridge from the generation that was hot to the generation that is going to come? What are some of the choices that I'll make myself? That's why I started Peace and Love Proclaimers, PLP.